In this video I will show you how my average day goes as a full time game dev, dad and an indie game developer. I will try to keep the rest of the day condensed and show you a bit more what I'm working on as a full time game developer as well as an indie game dev. So I start my day by getting ready for work and semi dadding. Eating a wiener. Pause. After that's done, then it's time to take my son to the kindergarten. And now it's time to go to the office. As most of us I start by making coffee and pouring me some water. Usually half of the days I work in the office and the other half I work from home. Today, since I'm filming, I decided to split my day in two parts. First part I will work from office and the second part I will do from home. And then I'm ready to roll. Aside from programming, I also do some project management, system architect stuff, sysadmin stuff and some DevOps things for the company. So I try to get these tasks out of the way early so I can focus on developing without any distractions. Our company usually makes exhibits as well as games for museums, science centers and events. Depending on the need, I would make a Unity game, an AR, a VR project. Some exhibits might involve relays switching on or off to control lights or furniture. Some exhibits are done using NFC, sensors and other hardware stuff as well. We do some AI image or text generating projects and we also do some quizzes, content based exhibits as well as web based games. For the Unity and more complex projects I use Unity and PC combination but for the web based projects we use HTML and JS and CSS plus the Brightside Media Player that has a built in Chromium based HTML5 player as well as the ability to send and receive GPIO, UDP inputs and outputs among others. So this way we can easily control relays and other hardware -y stuff. One of the tasks that I had planned for today was addressing an issue with Angry Birds type physics game about trash sorting. The game looks simple, you have different types of trash cans and you have to throw a trash item in the corresponding bin. Not sure if teaching kids to sort trash by throwing it is a good idea, but that's life. The problem that I had to address was that the new trash item spawned even if the shot was not strong enough and the active item went off screen because it had no place to spawn. So I just added a bigger drag threshold for the drag and shoot mechanics. Then I built the project, set it up on museum's PC remotely, tested it with the client and now it all seems to be fixed and there are no complaints from the client. For the rest of the pre-launch time I fixed some things in a mobile web app that has a tour of a museum with the games attached to each exhibit. And now it's time to go and eat some lunch. Today's choice is ramen. Having a tasty lunch is one of the highlights of the days I go to the office because I'm a gluttonous pig, no offense to pigs. After the lunch I went home and now it's time for the second part of the day of my main job. For the afternoon I had planned two things. One is to add another physical deck to the card game that shows augmented reality hints on the cards. This is an Android and iOS app that we developed. So this is what I started with. This was a pretty straightforward process and I didn't really have to code anything since I have coded the app fully previously using Vuforia for AR and image tracking. Just needed to add the deck, videos, target images, cards and new menu selection. I did a bit of testing for it after that and when that was done I still had some time left to do some project management stuff. So I did some work on our project information registry in Confluence. Currently we're moving away from Notion and it's on me to get everything sorted out. And now the working day is over, time to get my kid from the kindergarten. And when he is safe home it's time for some sports. I usually train 2-4 to four days a week and today I have indoor basketball practice. Me and my wife we take turns doing sports in the evening and today was my turn to go. If I don't have a basketball practice I usually play some basketball outside, skate or simply go to the gym. As well as I do an occasional run which I hate by the way, but I do it just to force myself to train discipline and cardio. With my current schedule it's pretty easy to forget about training but for me it's a very important part of my life that also works as a domino effect for the rest of the stuff I like to do in my spare time. If I train a lot, I can game dev a lot, as well as do other stuff that makes me feel fulfilled, resulting in a more happy and satisfied me. After that we needed to eat something and I proceeded to make the most basic tacos known to humankind and they tasted exactly as you expect. After we had some, now is the part of the day where I get to spend some quality time with my family. Building some train tracks, drawing, simply spending time with my kid and my wife. When it's time for my kid to go to bed, he takes a bath, we all wash our teeth and go to the bed to talk through the day as well as read a book. I say goodnight, my wife puts him to sleep. After we watch a TV show or don't. So it's about 10 p.m. I can start working my game. On occasion I might skip the game dev part, but for the most part I do it every weekday. Even if the progress is sometimes quite small, it's still progress. I start by opening up my game. Currently I'm working on enemy subtimes for my roguelike game. The first four base types were already created. Melee enemy, 
flying enemy that flies over the holes, shooting enemy, as well as an exploding enemy. So for each I needed to make some subtypes to have more enemy diversity. Currently I have subtypes for shooting enemies done, a trident shooter, a rapid shooter, a homing shooter, as well as the blind shooter that does not follow the player but instead goes to the random spots on the navigation layer. The base art for these were done by an artist, but the subtype modifications I'm able to draw myself. Every evening when I start I like to set myself some goals, minimum goals and a nice to have goal. Since I had already done the art for the charging enemy with horns, I needed to start the work on charging enemies implementation. This won't be as straightforward as the shooter subtype modifications, since charging is a whole different ball game. So the must have goals were get the created sprites and animations in the engine, get them working, create, move and modify the colliders for the charge attack hitbox, as well as getting a constant ray cache check to the player to see if the tile set is not in front of them. Nice to have goals would be to add a shader that would make the enemy blink 3 times if the timer is depleted and the enemy needs to charge to the player. I know it's not much, but with the filming and all today I felt like it would be enough. And that's why charging to the player's actual position I left for the next day. So I went ahead and did all that. I added the animations, fixed hitboxes, started to adjust the melee attack scripts with each charger conditions. Got a raycast to the player that checks if no colliders in the group tile map or hole are in between them. And if they are not, I made the enemy blink red. It's not much, but the goal was reached. Next evening I added the charging itself. Here's some proof. And after that was done, I played PlayStation for a small bit. And after that, it was time for bed. And then I opened my eyes again, wake up. So this was as close to a regular weekday day in my life as it could be. I try to keep it real and not to over exaggerate. I hope it was not too stale. Of course some elements might switch up on some days like sports that I do every other day. But all in all, this is it. I hope it's been interesting. If it was, like, comment, subscribe. I also will share more about my game in some later videos. So definitely subscribe if you don't want to miss that.